Hello, all. Uh, this is Dr. Dave Masnack talking about Reciprocity.com, a sharing economy proofreading platform that I am trying to build. The E is spelled with a three. And in this particular video, I really want to talk about how do you write an amazing introduction to a research paper. And this is all part of my Nerd Out Wednesday series. I'm putting out different things that I find interesting in science. This is stuff that I have to deal with on a regular basis. I'm a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship. And so this is all the stuff that we talk about. I'm basically, uh, you can think of me as a social scientist, as a social scientist, where I study people and organizations, how they work together. And so there's a lot of different things that we talk about in science that is unique. And this is me helping you understand how to do things. So this, this particular video is geared definitely towards senior undergraduate students to graduate students, masters and PhD students that are interested in writing a research article. And so I have a series of these different um, these different videos out and how to actually write a research article. And this is kind of getting close towards the end of this. This is the way that I sort of think about the way that I would craft a study is I would often, what you do is you kind of iterate through a research study, any sort of scientific article. You will think about the sort of theory that you're using, create a hypothesis to sort of predict the world. But then once you get the results, then you can sort of see what's going on. You have to look at the conclusions, draw your conclusions and stuff like that, your implications. And then you kind of work backwards again to see if it fits. And there's kind of like this iterative process that happens. And I know that this is kind of not the, the kosher way of the way that, that we're sort of taught with hypothesis testing, particularly in graduate school where you just have your theory and you come up with your hypothesis and that should be the end of it, right? Your results are just sort of confirming or disconfirming your uh, results. But there is a lot of iteration. There's a lot of sort of thought that goes into crafting a research article. And it's definitely this give and take where you come up with your theory, first of all, then you go through the research process and you do your analysis. And then after that, you got to come back and sort of rethink what you're suggesting and kind of make it fit a lot better. There's definitely a, a lot of iteration that goes on. And then you get feedback from your reviewers. Your reviewers are going to suggest you to do different things. And then you have to sort of rejig it once again. So what? is or so how do you write a an amazing introduction in a research article well there's kind of a real formula to any research article i encourage you to look at them i encourage you to go back and look all the ones at the ones that you have all read and this is pretty from what i've read i've read pretty broadly um, not only in the social sciences but in the sciences in general and there is a general, particularly within in the sort of health sciences, within medicine, I study medical devices. So I might study stuff about medicine, for example, to find out sort of how adverse um, events are treated within medicine. That's one thing I, I look at is adverse events and learning from adverse events. So one thing that we do do in science is um, there is a sort of formula. The first paragraph, every single per paragraph in an introduction is what do we know about this particular phenomenon? And it's usually very, very narrowly, very narrowly defined as what the particular phenomenon you're looking at, right? And that's what you wanna do is focus on that really, really tiny uh, thing that you're looking at, whatever it is, maybe it's adverse events in cardiac devices or even even narrower uh, implantable cardiac ca cardio defibrillators right the really narrow and then even narrower this type of defibrillator even a even more what's that's called an ICD uh, what's even it's a pacemaker essentially and even narrower you want to look at different sort of subtypes and then you look at the adverse events that happen there and then you sort of look at all the studies that talk about that particular thing so you're always thinking like layers of an onion where you're sort of peeling back and getting more and more narrower and getting sort of tightly defined right that's that's really a, a um, there's an art to this where you want it really broad but at the same time you really want it narrow narrow and closely defined so you can so you can actually write a mean, meaningful and manageable research article right so i would suggest by getting feedback on what that particular phenomenon is and kind of iterate through as many times as you possibly can which is 
one reason why I actually created reciprocity, by the way, that, um, is to get peer feedback along the way. But anyways, so what you want to do is talk about in the first paragraph, what do we know about X? List all the sort of citations and the different phenomenon that sort of explain or the different um, sort of ways of looking at X in that introduction. Then you go into, however, but yet there's always this kind of thing within the second paragraph. And this is where we don't, we talk about the things we don't know about that particular phenomenon, right? So we, what we don't know about X, whatever that X is, what is that phenomenon, right? And um, then what you will go in the third paragraph, and it's always this way, right? And maybe the paragraphs, maybe there's an extra long one, maybe there's two paragraphs that sort of break things up, but it's general. Generally, this, this sort of pattern exists. Then we talk about, you know, how does, how does the thing that we're doing solve for X? How does a paper solve for X? So this is where you get into your research methodology and the sort of way of looking at that, maybe the data that you're using, for example. And then finally, you know, what are the results in that particular, um, you know, what did you find? So we made these particular hypotheses, we hypothesized this, but we found this, um, that kind of phenomenon, right? And then you will get into what are the implications of your study? That is really important to think about. What are the theoretical implications of the studies that you have? Um, if you hear something in the background, my doggies are walking around right now. What can I say, right? Um, <laughs> goofballs. Okay, so the implications, uh, then you think about what are the theoretical implications for solving for that particular phenomenon. Um, and that's the important thing. Even if you look at, the, actually medicine does a really good job. I encourage you to look at any sort of medical journal. Uh, they do an, a phenomenal job of this with their, they have usually sort of research synopsis at the beginning, some abstract that is very well done where they have, you know, what is X, what we don't know about X, what did this paper do, and then finally what are the implications is usually really, really tight, right? And that is the abstract that they use. I really love the way that they do that. For some reason, we don't do it as much in my field in organizational theory as much as I would like. But, um, you know, that, that there are some way we can definitely learn from what they're doing in medicine in the way that they're making things very concise. So some things we do really well in organizational theory and some things, you know, other fields do really well. And that's one thing that, that I'm pointing out. <laughs> Okay, so then you have to think about what are the theoretical implications? What are the implications, not only in terms of sort of uh, um, theory, some journals who ask you to think about what are the practical implications. I really take the view that you should always strive for theoretical implications, whatever those are. It's really often hard. It's the hardest thing to think about. But what you're looking for is something that's generalizable and parsimonious as much as possible because there's nothing as good, there's nothing as practical as a good theory, right? Something that is really concise. Um, like E equals MC squared, right? So that's a formula for a theory, but that is really concise. It's really easy to understand. Well, it's not easy to understand, but it's it ge it's very generalizable. It is widely used. Um, it's very simple. Those kind of things that if you can come up with a theory, it will be it will pay dividends in practicalities in the future. You pay lots and lots of. Um, practical dividends in the future because it's so easy to understand and that's a good theory when you come up with something like that. Um, so in terms of implications, what I normally do, and this is a good a trick in our field, this is kind of what we aim for from what I, what I can see, is what you want to do is have a paper that has two to three uh, more three. We, the, for some reason, we really like threes. Um, a lot of people love threes. I don't know why. Why do we love threes? I, <laughs> I'm not sure, but we love threes, right? So I always sort of think of threes, three implications for this, three implications for that, three sort of theoretical implications in these different ways. And that is where you're sort of carving out and what the particular implications are. Um, and again, I'm going to come back to this that what we don't know, know about X, you have, to, you have to really understand what you don't know about X. And it's not just understanding that, oh, we didn't study this, you know, 
Um, I wish we would have studied this, but um, it, it's not just that, right? That, that, that excuse is not really a good excuse. You have to come up with what is the puzzle what is the assumptions that you're trying to sort of resolve? There's always a puzzle. If you think in terms of puzzles and you're fitting puzzles together, do, 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 right? You're fitting all these puzzles to, together and your paper is the central piece. It is the cornerstone to building the big building of the way that you're thinking about sort of theory building. That is going to give you a lot more dividends. A, it's going to get you through, through the, it's going to give you a first review. Um, to the in the review process if they could see that that puzzle is ooh, that's kind of interesting that puzzle and you're solving that it's going to probably give you the first review of getting through the review process and then b it's going to hopefully get you more citations in the future because you're solving something that's kind of a conundrum a puzzle um, some sort of thing that's just not obvious when you first look at it but then once you look at it and you sort of describe and you have to describe why it's not obvious right I mean, if, if reviewers are saying, well, that's obvious, that, then you didn't do a very good job of motivating why it's not obvious. So that's what you have to think about constantly is sort of selling it as this is really not obvious. There's all these things that are going on and we wouldn't expect this to happen, but it does happen. Right, so that's what you're always thinking about. One way to actually find, and um, you can look at a couple of videos ago where I actually talk about this is a, a trick to find all of these sort of unique implications and sort of figuring out what the niche is for your study is start doing these tables where you list all of the papers that you can think of, all the articles that you can think of. Usually it's ending, it, it'll end up to be that like five to 10. I mean, if you're going beyond 10, at that moment, you're probably, it's gonna be hard for you to generalize at that moment, but you should probably aim for about, you know, five to 10 different articles in there. And you'll start seeing themes of how these things sort of fit together. And I'm not saying just cite five to 10 articles, I'm saying just that's for the beginning, for you to get your thoughts wrapped around what's going on. And then you're gonna start seeing these themes emerge from what's going on, and that's gonna be your unique contribution is, oh, I did this, and all these other st studies didn't do that, right? And that is an important, this is an important thing to help solve that, right? So that's what you're trying to do. So that's really what I wanted to sort of point out. There's four different things that are really incredibly important to nail down in any, um, any research paper, right? So what do we know? What do we know about X? What don't we know about X? What is this paper doing to solve that? And then finally, what are the implications? If you can get those nailed down, that you're really far ahead of the pack and that's what you have to think about is how to nail that down get that down so if you like what i'm doing with these videos do the old ding ding right um make sure that you also leave some comments as well if you're interested watch some old videos too um so the definitely helps with the reciprocity project this is the e is spelled with a three and that's where i'm, I'm trying to create this uh, proof uh, sharing economy proofreading platform where I am um, I'm building it out and it's really just basically like trying to get peer feedback and stuff like that on there so if you actually interact and you and you help somebody else out it's going to be completely free but if you start taking turning it you get coins or credits or whatever and those credits, if you want to take those out of the system, there's going to be a system charge at that moment. Um, the other thing to note, if you want to get your own work proofread, you can earn those credits by doing that. But it's going to take you a long time because it goes through a whole sort of queue and you'll get called upon every once in a while. But if you, and the, the key is to, um, to speed that up, just pay. At the beginning, you can buy credits. I've been doing that. It's actually really amazing what people are doing on there. I'm, I'm, I'm so blown away on how cool it is to see people contributing and doing an amazing job and they're seeing it. Um, I've, I'm just impressed that, that, that this thing is, it's, it's happening. It's, it's real. It's, it's occurring, right? So anyways, thank you so much. Take care. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye.